I actually took this to Slick Rock just to see how far I could take it. The consequence was I tore the steps off. Get yourself a $200 fake tent from Walmart and just go out there. Hi, my name's Paul. Uh, this is my Nissan NV2500 van. Her name's Snowstorm. Why don't you come on and check it out? All right, this is the inside of my van. It started out as a road trek uh, conversion. So they put the seats in, um, they put this cabinetry in in the microwave, and there were some seats in the middle, which I pulled out and built this cabinet. Right here is the sink and have hot and cold running water. And I also have a shower outlet. Uh, I have a kiddie pool that you can set down here and you can take a shower inside the van if it's like zero degrees outside. I've got a space heater that I've been in negative 10 degrees with just the little space heater and it keeps it 70 degrees in here. The next drawer is basically just a cupboard. I've got the microwave here and I use this probably way more than I should, but it's a real easy way to cook when it's really cold outside. And then I've got a 12 volt Dometic chest fridge built into the cabinet here. In the cabinetry. This is a pantry for food. I've also got extra frying pans that I'll use on open fire. And then I've got a TV hooked up to the stereo. I have four kids and so I've got about 30 Disney movies. And so we'll watch movies in here or when we're driving they'll be back here watch TV and I can kind of handle things up there. We have two fans. They're all 12 volt and that's mainly what we do for air conditioning. And if it gets so hot, I can turn the car on and it's got a rear air conditioner and a front air conditioner so I can cool it down really quick. I've always enjoyed mountain biking, fishing, snowboarding, even doing triathlons and kind of saw people in vans like this and wondered about it. And then I went on a trip with my four small children and it was a disaster from an airplane perspective. So I said, we're not flying anymore. Uh, so we got a big class C RV, shenanigans ensued. I sold the class C and said, April, my wife, uh, what if we got a van and we could stay in the hotel when we got there, but it was still comfortable when we drove. And that's what kind of got me into this van because we had six seats. And then I started uh, just doing more and more boondocking and seeing what this thing can do off grid and falling in love with it. And just really every modification I've made to this thing has been somewhat of an adaptation for enabling me to get out further, do more things and, and do it in a way where it's still fun yet inexpensive so that I can do it more. So this is my seating area during the day. I like to work here. This is a thermostat control for the uh, gasoline heater that I installed. So it vents out the vehicle, but this thing can get this vehicle very, very hot. But what's awesome about it is it's thermostatically controlled. So once it gets it up to 70, it turns it off. Um, and it jets out here. So when the bed's made, I'll just make the bed for you. Just drop this down. And then I have a two inch memory foam. And then I have a little drape that goes across the front. Very cozy. The pop top's great for two reasons. One, I can sleep down here and my kids sleep up there and they feel safe and I feel safe that they're up there doing their tent thing. But when it's just me, I don't even pop the top. So this is a platform. It can hold like 600 pounds. It comes out and slides on these rails and it basically makes a queen size platform from about here up. One or two of them will sleep up there and they've got night lights. Um, and they just kind of climb up on bed, step up here, jump up, and uh, that's where they sleep.
it's so cliche, but it's like, just do it. This is my fourth attempt at it. And I'm still not in any way, like this thing's amazing and it's awesome, but my kids are getting bigger and I'm gonna have to adapt and maybe sell this and start all over. I've built uh, uh, a living space out of a cargo trailer and it was a fun project for my kid and we go to Taos and I use that sometimes. I have a 36 foot long travel trailer and I've used that for something. So there's no perfect rig and frankly, there's no perfect time. You don't have to go full time to really get something out of this. So I just say, and I, I don't even wanna say I say it. People say, and I agree, take what you have, get yourself a $200 gazelle fake tent from Walmart and just go out there and just start saying, this is what I like to do. This is what I don't like to do. And then iterate from there. If you're sitting there waiting to buy a $200,000 Storyteller Overland van, which is an amazing van, but that's what's holding you back, in my opinion, you're doing it wrong. This is my outdoor patio. It's an ARB awning with the room attachment. Um, it's great for shade. Uh, but we also sleep in it. I have four children. Some sleep up top, some sleep in here, some sleep out there, some sleep in the front. The wind was really bad, so this tent is usually outdoors, but I put it indoors and we can take showers, change, and go to the restroom. I live in Texas and the mosquitoes come out uh, at night on the beach when you're sleeping on Galveston or Port Aransas. And so this room can include you and keep you protected from the bugs. So I got the extra large deluxe box with the top rack and the shovel and ax. We actually used this in a campfire permitted area earlier this week. And then inside, I keep my roof ladder. The awning room goes in here. I have a geyser shower. And then on this side, I opted for a spare tire cut carrier. Just got this trash aroo and it is the best thing ever. $30 or whatever on Amazon, go get it tomorrow. Um, being able to store your trash outside. I got some recovery boards. I actually use these more for leveling the van than getting out of things. So this is the back. I had a guy in Steamboat custom build this box and it's built for four batteries, but I've got two batteries hooked up to it right now. And then I've got my inverter, my solar controller, and then right here, it's the real simple five gallon water setup. When everything's all packed in, I actually can fill it from the top. All right, if you're in a van for more than one night, you should know about these. These are magnetic hooks, but these things are awesome. And they basically, anywhere there's metal, they give you a place to hang stuff. My dad and I would go camping in his Nissan Pathfinder like 20 years ago, and uh, we would go fly fishing. And so fly fishing is a big part of this, but the rods and everything was so big. And then I got this backpack with a uh, collapsible rod, all my gear, and I just leave it right here. And every time I see a fun stream and I have a license, I get to go fly fishing. This is a Nissan Envy specific Aluminous bumper. I went with aluminum just because I'm already just putting so much weight. I wanna go off-roading. Uh, I went with the winch bumper for two reasons. One, I wanted a winch. Two, I wanted the hitch. And they said the hitch on the winch bumper is a lot better than the hitch on the slim bumper. I really wanted this hammock holder. I love sleeping and hanging out in hammocks. I leave the base connected and then these poles, I just have a bag, they come on. All right, so this is the driver's side with a two inch lift, four wheel drive, off-road, oversized, all-terrain tires. I actually took this to Slick Rock just to see how far I could take it. The consequence was I tore the steps off and threw them away. So these are 
aluminum bumpers from advanced four wheel drive and they are rock sliders and they connect to the frame so that when I go over, it's a long van. When I go over things, they'll slide on it and protect it. You know, my dad and I would do this when I was in my early 20s and he passed away when I was like 27. And my friend just lost his dad, I guess like three months ago, four months ago. And he recommended this book called Die With Zero. And of course I tore through it because I'm overlanding and listening to books. And it really makes this case for getting out there, really making memories early because those are what you're gonna have towards the end of your life. You're not gonna say, hey, did I have this thing or this car or this boat or this van? It's gonna be what you did that really kind of comforts you at the end and you won't always have your health. So, you know, I, I, I can't recommend it enough just to kind of get out there with what you have, start making those memories. The sooner you do it, the more they'll pay off. All right, well, uh, thank you so much for taking the time to uh, come see my rig. It's a, a passion project at this point. There's no real good reason other than it makes me happy and I hope it makes you guys happy. And uh, if I see you out there, awesome.